This is my Blue Dream tank. And I got a bunch of little Blue Dream shrimp in here, the Neocaridina. And also some bladder snails. And there are, and I cannot remember, five or six pandacories and two little plecos and some, well, there's one of the pandacories right there and some uh, guppies. And they're the, I don't remember what they call them, red tuxedos hiding back there. There should be four males and a couple females in here. And then plants. I've been fighting cloudy water in this tank for a while and I'm not exactly sure why, but I have. So I keep doing partial water changes on it and we'll just keep doing it. One of the plants, and I'm gonna rephrase that, two of the plants I have are floating on the surface here. Um, red root floater and duckweed and duckweed is the bane of my existence so and I had it pretty well gone but I backed off for a while and it's just exploded it's kind of hard to get to here because this is a whopping I don't know maybe five inches right here so it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all this out toss it all uh, but in the meantime I want to make sure there's shrimp they love hanging out under the duckweed here and the uh, red root floater and so I don't want to catch any of the shrimp in that and there are some very very tiny shrimp in here uh, let's see that's one of the big ones actually there's another relatively small one right there um, and they'll get up there too and I don't want to lose any shrimp I spent a lot of time cleaning the uh, filter goo out of my inside tank because I get full of little bitty red cherry shrimp and I just don't want to throw them away that's just me so I spend a lot of time collecting out all that I can sometimes as many as 20 or more somebody suggested put a uh, it's a little internal filter um, I think it's a nicru uh, somebody suggested put a um, some pantyhose stocking or nylon over it and I didn't have any, but what I did have was cheesecloth. And in no time, the cheesecloth just got completely impacted with the stuff in the tank that, that essentially sludges up the uh, um, sludges up the sponge in that little internal filter. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna put some water in this bucket, and then I'm gonna start taking out the plants, and then I will check. You know, hopefully the shrimp will drop to the bottom if any do make it and then I can pull them out because I want to pull some shrimp out of here because I want to put them in another tank not all of them that way I'll have two tanks with blue dream I've tried in my big 75 gallon tank and uh, the first time I think within a week they were gone uh, so I, okay maybe the water wasn't uh, wasn't suited to them yet and then I tried you know almost a month later and put another 10 or 12 in and they lasted for a month or so now i don't see any so i either the water's not working for them or uh, uh they get stuck in the back behind the rocks and when i do a water change they just they don't survive back there i don't know so we'll see we'll just keep plodding along and eventually i'll have a colony of blue dream shrimp or maybe the orange sun kissed in that tank i'm not sure so i've got some of those too so you can notice, water's still cloudy, but the duckweed's gone, yeah. God, that is the bane of my existence. And that is, this is where I feel like mischief managed. Um, and the red root floater's gone too. And I saved some of the red root floater out. I took it out, I took a few pieces out and I put them in another tank and there's still little bits of duckweed popping up. Uh, I'll keep those pulled out and uh ooh, baby guppies <laughs> and, and i'll get a, a good stand of red root floaters going with sans duckweed how's that because god i do not like that stuff i know it's got its place uh but its place is not in garage aquatics world headquarters that's just all there is to it it's you know it, as far as i'm concerned it should be on the top of the list for invasive plant species and yeah, my two cents, and I, you know, it's, I know people love it, and it's one of those love it or hate it, and I get it shades the top of the tank really nice, and, and I get it provides cover that way, um, and it sticks to everything, 
and when you do a water change, it gets tumbled down into the water column. It sticks to everything underwater. So if you try and get rid of it, it's always popping its ugly head back up. But whatever, what are we gonna do? We're gonna either love it or hate it, and I do not love it, so there. Uh, but anyway, it's clean. So I've seen a couple pieces pop up, and I go in with my little trusty shrimp net and just net them off the top, and I will keep doing that, and hopefully, because I've got a couple other tanks that have gone completely duckweed free now, uh, and it took a while. It took a concerted effort to do it, but if you want to do it, it's possible. So in this case, I just completely removed all the surface plants, um, and now I'm still, you know, occasional uh, piece of duckweed will rear its ugly head, pop up to the surface, and I'll net it out, and eventually this tank will be one of the duckweed-free tanks that I have, so that'll be on the list. All right, well, I, I didn't want to use this net just chasing my fish around, but I will chase some shrimp around because I'm going to move a few. We'll see how it works with shrimp. See if they get stuck in here. Let's let's hope not. It is really fine, so we'll see. I'm going to catch plants and all. And I'm going to need two hands for this. They're kind of hard to see because they are dark also. These are blue dream cherry shrimp. So I'm going to dump these into this measuring cup. They're going into another tank. That's why I'm doing this. All right. Well, the shrimp did not stick to the net at all. They all came out. That's a nice lot of shrimp. So I'm going to get rid of the snails. There's three of them. I got uh, bladder snails in this tank. And I just fill, or netted out a whole bunch of uh, uh, duckweed and some redroot floater. I was saying duckweed is the bane of my existence. But these are going to go in another tank. But anyway, I just wanted to show that that net works well also uh, for chasing sh uh, shrimp. You know, especially when you get them in a big wad like that. They were all stuck on this hydrocottle Japan. So that made it really, in fact, there's another one. So that made it really easy to do. All right, so I got all the duckweed. Well, yeah, all the duckweed. I got a bunch of the duckweed. There's probably still some in there. I'll be chasing it for a while. And all the red root floaters out of there. Um, and there were a bunch of the Blue Dream shrimp in that hydrocottle Japan. So I just grabbed the net and, because uh, she wasn't doing anything. You know, if we had two Perrys, we could put a net between them and play platypult badminton. Who's a net? Ferb, that's it. I know what we're going to do today. No, seriously, who's a net? And uh, caught, just pulled out that chunk of uh, hydrocottle Japan with all these shrimp on it. There are 17 that you can see. And there is one in there that is so tiny. There it is. It's it's kind of in the reflection. There it is, kind of heading towards the center of the cup. Anyway, so we're going to put these. We're going to take them around the other side here because they're going in the guppy tank. I'm going to drip acclimate them. So this is my drip acclimation rig. It's a couple suction cups and a little uh, aquarium valve. Uh, a couple pieces of uh, tubing. I don't know, it's probably about three feet long and sort of cut in the middle-ish, and that, and there it goes. And and that's where I put the valve. So to set this thing up, one end goes in the tank, in the tank, one end goes in the tank, and, and I, I'm gonna use that suction cup to hold it there. And then this end will go in the cup. So I gotta make sure the valve's open. And I'll, yeah, suck a little water up. There it goes, it's running. And I don't want it to really run, I just want it to drip. So I'm gonna shut it, shut the valve all the way off and open it just a little bit to get a drip to start. It's a little tuning. Unless there's something stuck in the end of that, like a little guppy got swum up there or something, you never know. There it is. So I'm just going to let that drip like that and fill the, fill the cup, then I'll pour them in. Once again, I got distracted and this almost overflowed, ran into my neighbor outside. So what I'm going to do, very carefully, there's a little bitty one in there, Let's see if we can see them, right against the side, I have to move, let me see if I can point to them right behind my finger there's a small one here but there's this little bitty one right here I don't know if I can zoom in enough on that there we 
we go. So let's try and pour this in. I should pour off some of the water first. I think I will. Now that little one's right in the top. It's going to take off. So let's just slosh a little there. Oh, one made it in. There he is. I'm going to put the can in from the side. That's where I got the room. They are really active. They're probably not real happy with this. There they go. Now we'll hope they take. I like shrimp. I like the little neocaridina types. Once again, these are Blue Dream. Very cool little shrimp. They're really prolific. They, there wasn't much time at all before they uh, started making more after I got them. I think when I bought them, they were buy 10, get 12 or 13, something like that. And, and they pretty much all made it through the shipping. And, uh, and it wasn't a month and all of a sudden I'm seeing little, little shrimpies. Alrighty. Thanks for watching.